confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we might worthily participate in this holy sacrifice and now let us make an examination of our conscience Having confessed our sins to God and asking for his forgiveness, let us recite the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned and thought word and deed by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. For when peaceful stillness compassed everything, and the night in its swift course was half spent, your all-powerful word from heaven's royal throne bounded, a fierce warrior into a doomed land. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to who God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Please be seated.
God our Father, when your Son came into this world, you chose humble shepherds as the first witnesses of his incarnation. As we honor them, may we continue to proclaim his presence among us. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The first reading on this, the solemnity of the humble shepherds is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has proclaimed to the ends of the earth, say to daughter Zion, see, your Savior comes. See, his reward is with him, his recompense before him. They shall be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and you shall be called, cared for, a city not forsaken. This is the word of the Lord. The graduate, you are the most handsome of men. Fair speech has graced your lips. My heart serve my king, as I sing my to the king. The second reading for today is taken from the letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, I mean that as long as the heir is not of age, he is no different from a slave, although he is the owner of everything, but he is under the simple supervision of guardians and administrators until the date set by his father. In the same way also, when we were not of age, were enslaved to the elemental powers of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to ransom those under the law so that we might receive adoption as proof that you are children. God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord is king, robed with majesty. The Lord is robed, girded with might. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. Through Christ our Lord, amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. When the angels went away from them to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go then to Bethlehem. Bethlehem to see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told to them about this child. All who heard it were amazed by what had been told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated.
May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Nic venture Popolonius Christus. First of all, Merry Christmas. And my apologies that yesterday we did not have Christmas service, but I think it was the right decision to make due to the conditions that uh, we experienced in this area. But with that being said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Words taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Today, in the Polish National Catholic Church, we celebrate the solemnity of humble shepherds. It was established by our first bishop, Francis Hodr, at a special synod of the Polish National Catholic Church held in Scranton, Pennsylvania in 1906. Along with the establishment of the solemnity of the humble shepherds, Bishop Hodr at that time also instituted the solemnity of brotherly love. Isn't it interesting that Bishop Hodder would use these two feast days to emphasize humility and love? Some would find the phrase poor in spirit to be something and somewhat confusing. But I think that when we substitute the word humble for poor in spirit, this scripture passage takes on a clearer meaning. The shepherds who we honor this day tended the flocks of sheep for others and were among the poorest of all occupations and professions. They dedicated themselves to watch over their flocks at the peril of their own lives. They were like around-the-clock, 24-7 babysitters who took care of the needs of their flocks. They would lead their sheep from a pen in the morning for grazing. They would lead them to quiet brooks for drink. They would look for sheep who strayed from the flock. At night, they would lead the sheep back to the pen and they would count every sheep and check for injuries. They would keep watch over their flock during the night to protect them as the sheep slept from wolves and hyenas. During the cold and inclement weather they would guide them to caves. It should be noted that many of the sheep would be used in sacrifice in the temple. And so shepherds were important and valuable stewards who had many important responsibilities. Even with all these responsibilities, the shepherds were mostly humbled in spirit. To truly be righteous unto the Lord, a shepherd could not be self-centered, arrogant or proud and so it was that God first announced the birth of his son through an angel to these humbled shepherds if we look at the Christmas story we see that God chose the humble to usher in his kingdom of heaven on earth he chose Zachariah and Elizabeth the parents of John the Baptist, who he himself led a very simple and humble life. He chose a simple carpenter, Joseph, who would be the protector and provider for his, this son of God. And God chose a humble young virgin, Mary, who would bear in her womb 
the very presence of God. Bishop Holder, in establishing the solemnity of home, humble shepherds, was himself very humble throughout his entire life. It is said that he did not wear a bishop's cassock or a house coat, which had red piping, but rather he wore a simple priest's cassock. It is said also that he did not wear a pectoral cross or even an amethyst ring, signatures of his apostolic authority and office. Yet he was the organizer and the first bishop of our beloved Polish National Catholic Church. In the letter of St. James, chapter 2, verse 3, we read, Has not God chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised to those who love him? Humility, my brothers and sisters, is defined as having or showing a modest or a low estimate of one's own importance. There are so many this Christmas season who will miss the message of God's greatness because in their own ways they have separated themselves from this deep spiritual truth. They are the proud, the arrogant, the self-centered, and concerned first of all for themselves while ignoring others. My dear brothers and sisters, we are the messengers of this message. And we are called, account, called upon by God to be humble in spirit. And we are promised that ours is the kingdom of heaven. And you know, if we would take but a moment of those humbled shepherds whom the angel of the Lord first came to announce the birth of the Christ child, we would come to know and better understand that it is only in humility that the birth of the Christ child becomes real within us. He who came but for a short period of time on earth in all humility and that humility if we are truly honest unto God, that humility and that birth of Christ within shines within each and every single one of us to be shared with others. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of our Lord Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring gifts and enter his courts. Accept the Father of my eternal God, this immaculate host, which I, your worthy servant, offer unto you, by living in my true God, for my countless sins, offenses, and omissions, for all here present, that this sacrifice may avail me and them unto salvation and life everlasting. Amen. O God, disendue man with great dignity and worthiness, and through Jesus Christ, the wonderful, we love the humble and sanctified. Grant, we beseech thee that through this mingling of wine and water we may become worthy partakers of this holy oblation, which our Savior gives himself to be food for mankind and in the deepest proof unites himself with them. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. We offer unto you, O Lord, the cup of salvation, beseeching your mercy. Mercy, look upon your faithful people and accept this oblation of grace and petition and array and adoration for ours and for that of the whole world's salvation. Lord, receive us who bow before you in contrition and humility and grant that the sacrifice be so offered in your sight as to be pleasing to you, Lord our God. Come, sanctify us. Almighty, eternal God, and bless this sacrifice, prepared for the glory of your holy name. I wash my hands in innocence, and go about your altar, O Lord, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and telling all your wondrous deeds. O Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Sweep me not away with sinners, nor my life with bloodthirsty men, men in whose hands are evil devices, in whose right hands are full of bribes. But as for me, I walk in my integrity, redeem me and be gracious to me. My foot stands on level ground in the great congregation. I will bless the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Receive this offering, most holy Trinity, which we make in the memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, that it may add to their honor and aid our salvation. May they, whose memories we honor on earth, intercede for us in heaven. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in your mercy accept our gifts that we offer. By sharing in this Holy Eucharist, may we come to be more fully to live the love we profess. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your poor hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, 
God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. You who sent us Jesus Christ, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and was born of the Virgin Mother Mary, we have come to know the love you as our perfect Father through the revealed mysteries of your incarnate Word. We praise you, Father, and through your Son, now made visible, long to be with you, our unseen God. Therefore, we join this day with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, and King, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the Apostles. Remember, O Lord, our brothers and sisters. Let us remember in our prayers this day and pray for all those who are sick, suffering and dying, especially for our sister Estelle Jacobitis, who I anointed yesterday. Let us remember in our prayers and pray for those who are hungry, those who are homeless, those who are unemployed. In our deepest prayers, let us continue to pray for all those who are suffering from the COVID-19 pandemic and pray for their wellness and also for their families that God would give unto all of them strength. Let us be ever mindful and be grateful and pray for the doctors, the nurses, the first responders, and all healthcare workers who strive daily, placing their own lives to try to help others. Let us in our deepest prayers remember all abuse and neglected children in our world as well as all abuse and neglected animals. And for all victims of violence, both here and abroad, let us pray and ask God that he would protect all those who serve in our armed forces, both here and abroad, and have them be brought back to their families safe and sound. Let us also remember those who are in need at this time for the victims of the tornadoes and all disasters where many of them have lost everything. And all here present whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor, above all others, the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly 
men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who live, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people, through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering, and to make it pleasing unto yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, and become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples, and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful, and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries, and which spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, O Lord, in his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar, into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive from who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar, may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him, 
All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance through the same, Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, My peace I leave you. My peace I give unto you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and vouchsafe to grant it peace and unity according to your holy will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching, and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation, though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness, may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in us living faith, fervent love, Worship, adoration, and holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant this, who lives and reigns with God the Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. My dear brothers and sisters, let us at this moment offer the act of spiritual communion. 
Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he has rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. sacred banquet, memorial of the Last Supper, in which our Savior gives himself to be food for mankind, and in the deepest truth unites himself with them, 
Hear our prayers have been sent this day to your majesty, that as many of us shall receive from this altar, the most sacred body and blood of your Son may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. We did it. You should have seen me a couple of days ago. But thanks be to God. Thank you, Wendy. Lord, what we have received unto our lips, may we receive mentally, and may this temple gift become to us an everlasting healing. body, O Lord, which I have received, and your blood, which I have drunk, cling to my innermost being, and grant that no sin remain in me, in whom these holy sacraments have nourished, who lives and reigns with God the Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. The needy will never be forgotten, nor will the hope of the afflicted ever fade. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, Almighty and eternal God, through this Holy Communion, may your steadfast love be with us. Before all others you have called the humble shepherds to give praise, honor, and glory to your Son, at the stable in Bethlehem, we thank you that the poor, the humble, and the forgotten in the world are remembered by you. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The Lord be with you. is offered. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I, the unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for myself and all those for whom I have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning, through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found the light, light for the light of men. 
The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Christmas season, let us offer a prayer for all our faithful departed, for whom in God's mercy has given life and brings to us this Christmas season a lot of memories. Eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. Eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. Eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in the light of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 